Okay, are we ready? Okay, good evening. Today is Wednesday, September 4th, 2019. This is a special meeting of the Board of Education. If we could please start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, good evening. What we're going to do is um, we have a little, I apologize for the late start. We did have a tour at 6 o'clock of the campus. We wanted to, the board wanted to see that the school uh, was open for, going to be open tomorrow for back to school. And we were all very pleased to see um, the conditions of the school and all the hard work that has gone into um, having our school open tomorrow morning. Uh, for our students. So thank you to number one, um, our custodial staff, um, to Carl and Lee for all their work over the summer to move this project along. And it's very exciting. And then we did have some um, discussions with our, with our uh, architect and our project manager along the way of our tour. So we are a little bit delayed in moving along. So I do apologize for that. We do have a very quick business meeting, a few items we're going to go through, and then we're going to go right into a, uh, a board workshop, which is actually going to be a working meeting of the board. The board is going to be working on uh, our goals that we will be presenting at the September 16th board meeting. And um, so we wanted to have some time together to work on that. And we will do that publicly because that is the only way the board can work together. So uh, let's start with our um, business meeting. Um, one, accept personnel recommendations. Resolve to accept personal action personnel action items A through D as outlined below. Is there a motion? Pete, second, Therese, discussion. So I'd like Car to explain um, publicly for the board and, and for the public that um, we are amending the appointment of our interim director of health, phys ed, and athletics to interim athletic director, and that is Mr. Paul Tobin, who was appointed uh, last month. Uh, this is a technical change that um, the state is requesting based on Mr. Tobin's license, which is a school district administrator license. He can oversee everything, according to New York State, except phys ed. He can, in title, he, he can observe phys, physical education teachers. He can provide professional development to our physical education teachers and staff. He just can't, in title, be the director of phys ed because he doesn't have that phys ed license. Fortunately, um, letter D, uh, Mr. Scott DeBellis, our middle high school assistant principal, has a physical education teacher certification. So uh, he has agreed to uh, step up and uh, accept the extra responsibility. And uh, that is why um, the last um, resolution appoints Scott DeBellis as the director of health and phys ed just for this school year. Okay. Okay. And then there's just a couple of um, open coaching positions, and those um, Mr. Tobin's been able to um, fill since he's been here already, so we appreciate that. And I think that's it, right? And then there's a substitute. A substitute. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Oh, and that's it. So now we're going to adjourn that portion of our meeting. And motion to adjourn. Laura, second, Therese. All in favor? Okay. And we'll move on to our workshop. Okay. So basically, we um, in the past have always had our superintendent goals and our board of education goals. And last year, we set out the board at the time where we basically had one set of goals because we felt that the superintendent's goals and the board's goals were to be aligned and that we would have the same set of goals. And this year, after our retreat and the board speaking, and also with the recommendation of, of Carl, we did feel that we should really have, the board should have our own goals. So uh, we did set out um, after our retreat, and we all kind of worked independently as to what we felt um, should be our board initiatives this year, and did start to compile a list. And Carl also has prepared his um, 
superintendent goals, which I believe you are prepared to present, right, Carl, at sure. the, the September meeting? Are you want to? You're gonna. We're gonna just talk about them now, or you want? What do you want to do? Whatever the board prefers. I. I, I uh, well, I think it will help us date. to do it all together, yeah. right? And Sounds then, good. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, you want to go through it, Carl? Sure, sure. So, so what I'm proposing to the Board of Education, I included this in, in I think, your last Friday update, um, it is four goals for, for this upcoming school year. Uh, the first one um, is, is, I think, the broadest and, and probably one of the most important goals, which, which is to um, launch the district-wide strategic plan. So as you may recall, last year we spent a good amount of time conducting a needs assessment. Uh, that was in the fall. I believe it went into November. That included surveys. I believe we had about 1,100 uh, respondents. We also um, conducted focus groups with many different constituents in the community. Uh, in those surveys, they were tailored to, we had students uh, respond, we had teachers respond, uh, other professionals in the district respond, we had administrators. Um, I think the board also responded as well as community members, and we even did a survey for people who no longer had children in the school. So it was a very strong response. Uh, in January, our consultant worked, we, we brought together 25 uh, constituents, uh, everything from parents to students to administrators to teachers. We, we had representation, I think, a good representation of all aspects of our school community. And we developed, we analyzed the data, we analyzed the survey results, and we landed on the four goals, which are social emotional learning. The second one is diverse needs of learners. The third, contemporary teaching and learning. And the last category, which encompasses all the others, is professional learning. There's some debate over that, whether or not that should be a standalone goal. But the, the 25 people believe that that was important enough. If you're going to accomplish all of these other initiatives, the PD has to be something right. that, that is, is, is um, memorialized and something that, that you know, we, we're committed to, was, was, was the sentiment in the room that I recall. So this year, uh, we, we are ready to launch. Um, April, May, let me back up a bit. In April and May, we set up co-chairs for each one of these four goals. They worked with, with professionals in, in our school community. At the end, they also had PTA input, but they set up action plans. And Judy Wilson, our consultant, in June presented those action plans to the Board of Education. Uh, the goals earlier on were, were board approved. And now it's time to execute. And that, I think, is the most important phase. I also thank the board because as part of the budget process last year, uh, we planned for this. So for example, the professional development budget, as you will recall, was increased. Uh, there were new positions added. Uh, we have a new counselor in, in the district that will support the social emotional learning goal. Um, we have, I'm trying to think of the other, uh, you supported it in many different ways. PD, I mentioned, um, the new counselor. The Can you help me with SRO? the budget? The yeah. SRO. Yeah. The SRO, yeah, yeah, that, I mean, that will contribute to, yeah. I mean, it's not specific to the strategic Not specific plan, to one is, of the goals, but. It is kind yeah. of part of that of social money, giving people that another person in the building to go to. Thank you, yeah, and, and you know what I was thinking of, and, and you know, part of the capital project are, are steam, oh, and the steam teacher. Yeah. The steam, steam teacher, teacher, that was the right. one I was missing. Right. <laughs> Contemporary teaching and learning. Um, we have this theme this year of realistic to real. Dr. McDonald presented on opening day that we need to have authentic learning experiences for our children. That, that's what will engage them. I thought she did a great job, so, so that is one of the action plans. So it's being supported. Once that new STEAM classroom is open at Cottle, I, I think it's going to be cutting edge. Not too many elementary schools have uh, something like this or have a program like this. Many middle and high schools do have wonderful science programs in this area. But I, I think we're, we're going to be one of a few elementary schools to have a really innovative program. So working on this, moving this forward, part of this is an accountability piece. We, we, we committed to coming to the board and publicly presenting our progress towards this at least quarterly. So we will get that on our, our workshop calendar. We'll have people come in, teachers, administrators, and we'll present to you on, on how we're progressing towards the goals. The second area of teaching and learning is, is really ongoing, in my opinion. I did have a similar goal last year, but state ed, now we do have a new commissioner who, who just stepped in. 
Uh, state Ed is requiring uh, new standards that will be implemented. They're required to be implemented in September of 2020. So, so one year from now, we will have to implement a new curriculum in ELA and Mathematics K-12. So this year is the building capacity year. Uh, we're analyzing what is in place. We're looking, and we started this work last year, but it needs to continue and intensify this year so we can be prepared for September. You'll hear about this in the budget process. There may be some budgeting for new curriculum materials, but we need to align with state ed. Of course, we're a public school district. That's a requirement. But it's also good and exciting work, and, and we're looking forward to that. Um, the next one is safety and security. Um, Michelle even uh, touched on this in her opening comments to, to staff uh, yesterday. Uh, this has been an ongoing goal. I think we've come a long way as a district, but I think there's always more to do. Uh, we, we've already been working on this this summer. We updated our um, district um, plan. We've updated our building safety plans. There, there were new laws that we needed to comply with. Changes had to be made. Uh, the board did, did approve them at the last meeting. They've already been shared with staff. That's uh, part of what we did on our, our uh, professional conference days these past two days. There was safety trainings. Um, we also are doing physical things to our building. The new security vestibules will contribute to safety and security. Lee and I are working on seeing those projects through to completion. Uh, we have an SRO uh, who started with us. She's been introduced to the staff. She sat in our safety meetings. She will be at the building level safety team. She will be part of the district safety uh, uh, team. But she also will integrate herself with our staff with our programs, we, we envision her, um, for example, pushing into a health class if they're doing a unit on you know, substance abuse prevention or maybe you know, DWI, which, which we do in our health program at the high school. We see her being a, a, an integral part of that. Uh, and, and also with instruction at the elementary school, teaching children you know, safety, stranger danger. Uh, there are just, uh, the possibilities are endless. So Michelle Castellano is with us. And uh, we plan to move forward there, and, and I, I have some, you know, some more specifics as, as you go through. Um, things like uh, improving our, our um, afternoon pickup procedures and that are already you know, in effect or going into effect tomorrow, uh, and we will continue to work on that. We, we maintain the partnership with Altaris. Uh, I think that is money well spent. Uh, and we appreciate the board continuing to support Altaris, who does, they do the bulk of our training with our staff. Uh, lastly, uh, I have as a fourth goal that my proposal is the district capital project. Um, we spent a lot of time uh, earlier uh, just making sure the project remains on track. Uh, Lee and I worked uh, uh, very hard this summer with, with our project manager, with our architects, uh, but there's more work to do. Uh, we have to complete uh, the new classrooms at Cottle. Uh, we certainly have to see through the, the new security vestibules. And then uh, as, a, as a board and as, as a district, we do have to have some discussion about the Cottle playfield. Uh, so, you know, there was, as you recall, 400,000 set aside for the Cottle playfield, or 415. 405. 404. Four. 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 Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but we helped because uh, the ownership of Cyberway Boulevard has been transferred to the district. Uh, and we thought maybe that opened up some new possibilities. Uh, so we would like to have a bigger discussion about, you know, design and what possibly we can do with, with you know, the ownership of the street now and combined with the field. Uh, we have to talk about parking because uh, people are getting used to the 48 spaces. We created a temporary parking lot that really has come in handy because uh, Cywinoy Country Club that in the past allowed us to park there, they're, they're in the midst of a, of a major capital project and we were displaced. We, we are not able, our employees cannot park at Cywinoy at this time. Once their project is complete, will they be able to park there again? Probably, but they, I, you know, they've expanded their facilities, and that's a discussion. There is a new CEO um, moving in. The CEO is retiring. Uh, in, in, uh, David Cecil has been very good to us and a very good neighbor. But he is retiring in December. There'll be a new CEO, so there are no guarantees to right, us. Right. Um, <coughs> and I think those conversations need to happen as we consider, you know, do we restore the entire field, you know, right up until Middle Road, or do we consider making that temporary parking more permanent? Um, I know there's a lot of opinions out there, and I think we have to have some, some real thoughtful discussion, possibly reconvene um, our, our, you know, our facilities committee, 
Uh, maybe we could have a board liaison there, or my, is my thinking. Maybe get some thoughts from our architects about design. I know they had KG and D, you know, have um, showed us some ideas, but uh, they haven't got into any deep design work yet. So those are some decisions that I think we should start making over the next maybe two or three months. Okay. So that's my proposal to the board. I am open to any feedback or. Um, okay. Can I just ask you? So the. Um the strategic plan, you said we'll have reports to the board four times a year, correct? Yes. And then um, I know that also we have each of the building leaders also have their own goals, building goals for each of the principals, correct? We At, at this time, so, so it's, it's not required for them mm -hmm. to have goals. Mm -hmm. We are trying to get everyone mobilized behind the, mm -hmm. the four goals of the right. district. We think having a, a full alignment is best right so um no i had now of course they have specific things specific to their, to buildings. their buildings right. yes right, right, right. okay 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 all right so that will be again presented our um to the board at our next meeting and we'll formally um, mm. address that then and now um for the um the board's goals we um, had started, you know, and again, this is just going to be an informal working meeting here. So we just could freely talk about how we want to um, set it up. We have, um, do you have your, do you have, because mine, no, I'm done. Oh, you have it on my phone. Yeah, I have it on my phone. Oh, you have it, oh, perfect. And he has it. Yeah. Because yeah. of my battery. Yeah. 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 And okay. Michelle, if I may, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, mm -hmm. but um, our board clerk, Lauren Truel, did include the second attachment is is Sample? a board policy well the first one is is mm -hmm. there is a policy that was adopted in 2014 of board operational goals mm -hmm. so tonight you may be thinking of something different but but that this is already current policy we certainly at some point could think of revising it or changing it or so what was that again Carl? I if, you, if you look peter did you get a packet oh uh, yes, uh, yes yeah the the, the second page is, it's just w one of our policies. The, these are board operational goals, which I think is a bit different from what, what you have in mind for mm -hmm. this evening. Mm -hmm. But but I just thought, you know, as a reminder, we, we should include them. Uh, these are not required. You, you see what's checked off as local. So that this was a decision made by the board in 2014. But I thought maybe you'd want to consider this. Um, doesn't have to be tonight, certainly. It can be sometime in the future. And then Lauren also just added some sample goals. Um, she, she looked at some other districts. And, and just to be clear, it's not required by state ed for a board to have goals. Mm -hmm. Some boards don't. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, you know, that, that would be your, your decision as a board. Yeah, I think it's good to have. Yeah, guys, are, are yeah, we all absolutely. in yeah, yes, no. agreement? I mean, you have to, to sort of yes, we have, yeah. to have, have a starting point framework of where we want to work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I think we sort of um, saw the goals as more like priorities I think was the word right like right. more of what, what we feel like this year um, things that we felt were priorities that we wanted that we want as a board to um, to tackle so um, just let's start with um, our first is our superintendent search so of course, um, as everyone um, at this point knows, Carl will be um, ending his time here at the end of this year. And so we will be um, actively working on a superintendent search. Peter and Laura are taking the initiative in that effort. And basically, that is our number one. I mean, they, we're going right. to leave it there, right? right. That, that is our number one ongoing, um, ongoing work for this year. Um, I don't know, Pete and Laura, do you have anything you want to add to that at this point? Um, I mean, you know, go ahead. I, I mean, I do think that just on a broad uh, comment on that is that um, you know, to involve as, as many people in the process as a constituent, so in the community have conversations, within the building have conversations right. with, with our administrators, and really get a sense of a fit. And I think that it's, it's not going to be something that is done and then all of a sudden the person appears. It's going to be as transparent as we can possibly make it so that you know, we, we, we're, we're, it's a very important, uh, and we don't take that lightly. Sure. It's a, it's a really important thing. So um, it's going to be a lot of work, and um, we just, you know, that's, that's all I would say is that it's, it's going to be something that will be 
we'll be having conversations with the community about. Yeah. Right. And the, and the and the obviously the 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 goal is to hire a new superintendent in, right. in time to replace Carl with with uh, with you know congruence smooth transition. Smooth transition. Right. So. Um, and I think we also had said that what we'd like to do with these goals is, just as Carl is saying, is report on them um, as we're going right. along. Right. So, for example, we'll be setting up, uh, I know both of you are already setting up interviews with search committees. Right. So now at our next meeting, we'll discuss that. We want to continually right. keep the community right. informed as to where we are every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And in um, part of our um, board meeting or during board comments, we'll chop this up, these up, and each one will report on um, where what they're working on and That's what's good. happened at That's that correct. point. And I think yeah. it's a great way to keep the community up to date. Um, another thing, well, it's going to be on our next thing, which is communication. Another way that we felt that we could better utilize our communication is through our website and use our board page as a way of keeping the community up to date as to where we are in our goals, what we're working on, where we are with the superintendent search, where we are with some of our other things. So um, that is number two, and that is improved board communications and um, anything there. Right, so improve uh, board communications um, with our stakeholders. So, mm -hmm. so what are we talking about there? We're talking about community, parents, students, staff. Um, that that's I guess what we call stakeholders, right? Mm -hmm. So just a way to maybe just do a better job of, of of communicating with those entities in a way that is appropriate and that doesn't um, mm -hmm. circumvent normal chains of command mm -hmm. and normal procedures and things of that nature. Which is very important, right? right? So it's important that we come up with ways that we can we can be, be better. Uh, in, in that area mm -hmm. so we you know we threw out I think collectively through our own individual work a bunch of ideas and maybe a good thing to do would be kind of you know settle on what we want to actually yeah. do yeah. in that in that area right. and one of the things so. I'm noticing um, with the, some of the examples that um, Lauren put in here um, they're very general the mm -hmm. goals and I and I looked at our goals from years past that so they're very similar in that they, there's a title be you know there's curriculum there's um, facilities, whatever it is, let's say there's eight, and then underneath it there's sort of this brief, you know. Right. Um, I guess my question is, when, when I was sort of sitting doing these and we all sort of did it separately and then we're bringing it together, is that I put very specific things. Is that something sort of, so we have the general outline and then we have these specifics underneath mm -hmm. uh, that they're mm -hmm. not, or should we make it, you know, because, uh, you know, the details of it really is that the, the website, to me, um, mm -hmm. should really be our platform going forward as far as that's our first thing to change and how we even as a board you know who we are what we're doing mm -hmm. um, you know I put things down like you know um, wh what are some of the questions that come in in other words how does, how does the community speak to us there should right. be a general email you know just looking at other districts and seeing how they communicate just the board alone um, I think there's a lot of improvements that we can make and that I would hope that um, maybe through a, a third party we could um, get someone professional and to help us through that process, right. you know, with, um, I think it really just comes down right, to yeah, people and not re with yeah, us. Mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah. You know? And not trying to recreate the wheel that somebody else has already done. Yeah. Right? right. If we can just. Right. Right. So I think to Laura's point is how specific do we want to make the goal? Yeah. So the goal in general is, is to improve the communications and with, the, with the, specifically with our, all of our stakeholders. So ways to do that. One is through the website. One is through, we had talked about surveys. One is right. we had talked about um, working closer with having a closer relationship with our um, teachers union, our CSEA union. Mm -hmm. How can we open lines of communication there? What's the best way to do that? All, all these different types of things. So do we want to put out a, a, a specific I think so. I mean, I, to me, my feeling on goal setting is that goals do need to be somewhat specific. Now, I don't think on execution you need to lay it out. You don't mm -hmm. need to lay out in your goals mm -hmm. necessarily how no. you're going to mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. But I, but I think just saying improve right. BOE communications right. isn't good enough. Right. Right. I think you need to sort of specify what we want to do to improve those specifications, how it can be measured. You know, do we do it? Do we not do mm -hmm. it? And then the details of how we're going to execute mm -hmm. it doesn't need mm -hmm. to be in the, I don't right. think in this document. Right, but they could also be discussed at our meetings. So for example, right. work on the website, um, meetings that we may set up with, uh, with our um, unions or um, uh, other community groups, how we're going to go about doing that. All of that can be discussed at our board meetings and how we're going to do all of that. So um, so then we're in agreement that we're going to somehow 
have it measured, have it specific yeah. and measurable, but maybe mm -hmm. as a general starting mm -hmm. point, and then as we discuss them, whatever you know, however you want that mm -hmm. to go with the meetings, mm -hmm. but that we get into those mm -hmm. measurable goals. Right. So the website being a measurable goal. Right. Um, right. So I mean, I think I think we all agree that <coughs> we want to see improvements, vast improvements to the website. And then just to be specific, what we're talking about, I think we're talking about both, right? We're talking about the district's website, asking the district to do to do some improvements to that in general. Mm -hmm. And then also we want to specifically uh, improve our page, the right. page that right. relates to, right. to, the, to BOE. Right. Or do we, for the purpose of these goals, we want to just keep it to our page? I think it's better no. to broaden it out. No, yeah. no I think well, it needs to be broadened. Is, right. yeah. And keeping the website current with current, you know, right. Right. information and... For the district, I think that you know. Yeah. So improve the website essentially. Yeah. Yes. I think is the goal, yeah. and then we can get mm -hmm. into specifics one. later and on. Right. Specifics. Mm -hmm. so and then we, you know, we had even already started to talk about that. So, you know, part we had discussed possibly setting up a committee, and who would be on this committee for something like the website. Right. So we could have a board board um, representation there, and we would have administrator, and we would have staff, and mm -hmm. maybe even a student mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, how, is getting as much involvement. Maybe even there's a community member who's outside of the district, and what's the best? You know. Maybe there's, you know, they would have some input as to what kind of information they'd be looking for. And um, so I, I really think we need to um, bring everybody into the we, conversation. We, we could give the charge, I don't mean to interrupt Michelle, but another idea mm -hmm. is to give the charge to the technology committee, which already exists. Mm -hmm. so there is an established committee, Pete. I think mm -hmm. you're the liaison mm -hmm. to that right. committee. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly could have a second board liaison if, if the board wishes. Um, but you have people in place, um, the people that understand our technology. Yep. Um, and, and I think, yeah, I think, I think the only problem with that, though, Carl, is the technology committee only meets three, four times a year. I, but I, but I, they could increase it. Yeah, no, I'm saying, so that would, if, if we're going to do that, I think it requires some sort of, uh, I think in order for this project to be executed on, which means, you know, really mm -hmm. drastically improving the website, it, it, it needs some, some constant attention. Um, and, and, a, and a real way forward. Um, I also think so it's important that we involve the students because, yep. number one, it's yep. great for college application to show that you're part of that process. Yep. Yep. And they are probably have a lot of insight as far as technology more so than we, 100%. you know, certainly may. Well, and they're users of, you know, they're accessing right, information. Right, they're constantly mm -hmm. accessing information. So, right. And they're constantly they're using the internet. So when we say improve the website, I think we all collectively would agree. We're not just talking about making the website better um, in terms of how it looks and how it flows, but also do a better job at, the, at maintaining the content of that mm -hmm. website. So I think that's something that we've, we haven't done as, as good of a job as we could have. And, and I think, uh, as a district, I think, you know, there are a lot of things that aren't up to date sometimes on that website. And I think one of the things that we need to define is, you know, Who's who the is the webmaster, yes. necessarily. Here we go. Because that, that's the problem. I think, I think the, the, yes. the, the duties here are fragmented too much. So yeah. not to get into all that right now, but yeah. these are the types yes. of things that we're talking that's about. Right. Committee, yeah. The committee definitely can delve into that and just to explain how where it does get a little bit more complicated is the webmaster for the district and for the individual buildings is contractual it's in the teachers yeah. contract so many years ago when websites were, were pretty basic and pretty simple uh, that was a stipend and years ago teachers um, you know, took advantage of that stipend and, and, and did the work for us. But of course, the demands have grown and grown, and the expectations have grown, and, and the stipend hasn't grown right. with uh, a lot of the expectations. So that's, you know, that's a good discussion to have. And again, at a committee level, I think you could start getting into that kind of stuff. Some districts have a full-time public relations communications mm -hmm. person. Right. Typically, you see that with a larger district. You, you, you tend not to see it in a smaller district, but it's not What the do the smaller districts do then? <sighs> like Dobbs Ferry. You, you know, we'd have to, we'd have to look. Dobbs is, is well, a well, also, yeah. district But, but also size. another possibility which we can explore and, and, uh, is, is, look at models. Is, is also hiring a, a company to help us with that. Absolutely. I mean, so it doesn't have to necessarily be a public relations person. It could be, it could be a web um, yes. site company obviously we have to be actively involved in the content but in oh, terms yes. of in terms of the design and management I, I think what we're trying to say here by making this a, 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 a sub goal of our larger goal is that we as a board are saying that we think this is very important sure. that you know maybe up until now 
websites have been looked at as sort of a nice thing to have. I think mm -hmm. we're saying that it's 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 in today's world, it's a necessity to have a really good website mm -hmm. in today's world. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's what we're saying by, yeah, by this. Yeah, I agree. I think from many different standpoints, not even just from parents and teachers and kids using it, but also people who are looking to buy homes. Right. If we're it's showing, yeah. On a district. It's, it's a reflection. Very right. Looking to, you know, everything. It's everything. Right. Totally. You, can, you may want to consider a survey about, you know, about expectations and what people think of the current website mm -hmm. and what they would like to see. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, you know it's something that we certainly can work on. That committee, I think, could could work on developing a survey and get some input from the community. Yeah. So if you wish. Yeah. So I think the uh, basically what we're saying at this point is we we want to as a goal we want to drastically improve the website or well, overall all, you know, all aspects and all aspects of it and then we can kind of work on how we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. And I guess another one we had on here was a uh, was. We've talked about it in previous years, but uh, establishing um, some sort of yearly survey, um, a survey as a way to communicate with the board, a survey uh, both external, meaning meaning um, community, and then also maybe even an internal survey um, that is uh, filled out by by our staff um, to give the the, the board um, an, a, an alternate sort of data point of how um, the community and staff is feeling about things. And, and where the priorities should be from their perspective. So I think that's something we talked about doing as well. Right. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm curious, Carly, the uh, execution of surveys in the past. So I know obviously you had Judith Wilson in and she was contracted in to do that. But for example, like Survey Monkey or one of those common ones that are out there, would that be something that you would spearhead as far as, you know, what the content is, how it's, how it's you know, sent to the community? Who, who sort of handles that? Lauren Trull. Okay. Um, and again, in a small district, people wear many hats. So Lauren does receive a stipend for communications. Okay. Um, in a larger district, that may be a full-time position. But Lauren is okay. my clerk, as you know. She's my mm -hmm. secretary, mm -hmm. and, and she does communications. So, for example, with Judy Wilson, that survey, L Lauren played a big part in that. The, the survey, the development of it was more the administrative team with Judy Wilson. But um, as far as, you know, putting that out and, and you know, um, and then who analyzes, who does the um, analytics of the data that comes in? That was done by Judy, but then also with the 25 people that met over two days um, to analyze the feedback. Okay. So, so that, in that right. case, right. but I think what I'm hearing from Peter, and I know Peter, you've brought this up before, is, is something more regular. Right. Um, and again, you know, if, if a board, you know, there's no need, as I said earlier, to reinvent the wheel, we can check around. Lauren can ask other board clerks, you know, what, what surveys have other mm -hmm. districts done. We right. can get some models. Right, get some models, yeah. If right, because look, surveys are something we've done before, but we've always done it for specific reasons. Yes. I, I think what we're talking about is, is coming up with an annual survey that goes out every single year um, because, you know, and I, I I've used to not really be a big believer of surveys, but I've, I've, I've changed. I actually believe in them. But I think the real value is what they tell you over time. Absolutely. Because any, any given year can give you some anomalies. But when you have a survey that goes out every single yes. year and over a course of, of, of a block of time, it starts to tell you something. Mm -hmm. that, that's very real. Asking I, the same questions. Right. 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 And then so you're I, looking at trends. You're looking. You get a better pulse of what's. I think you also internal as well as external. I think it's important to get. Feedback. I mean, there's, yeah, there's no way I to think really know exactly. Right. Do do you want do you want us to look into a consultant to work with the board on that? For a survey specifically. Or do you want to try to develop that on your own? Um, I mean, I think you could look at models. To your point, I right. think there's Start with that. instead of sort of paying for a consultant. Yeah, we have I, I, would, I would I would say if we're going to spend money, it would be on a web. A, a yeah, professional exactly. website company mm -hmm. is going to come in and audit, which they do for no charge if you're going to, you know, look into that. I, I looked into a little bit. But they'll audit it. They'll give you feedback. And again, community, committee feedback. I think as, you know, as much as, as possible is always a positive thing. I don't think it has to be so scientific as no. much as... No, like just... Right. Yeah. Like, and like you said, to your point, Laura, definitely surveying... Um, not just community, but the staff, the mm -hmm. teachers, because the one thing that I am always most concerned about is when we talk about morale and that kind of stuff, yep. because I really think that it affects everything as far as, you know, the interactions with the kids, the performance, and like, why? Why isn't there a good morale? Why do you hear that so often? Is there validity to it? I don't know the answers to these questions, mm -hmm. but it's something that's always piqued my interest. Right. 
right. a little window, or not a little, but like a window basically into some of these things that we wonder, is it really there or is it not? Right. right to that point. Yeah. But the, the, the survey just made me think of something that um, in the community a couple of uh, parents had asked me, and that was when Judith Wilson came and she sent that survey out. Mm -hmm. I think we did sort of send out ha uh, the breakdown of the response of that survey. Um, but a lot of the parents were like, well, what, what, whatever happened with that survey? Or what were some of the responses in that survey? So I guess in, in having this conversation, just bringing it all together as far as communication, is that that should have been on our website, you know? Right, you giving know, the results. It should have been sort of showcased a little bit, like underneath, this is what we did, and maybe a little video of Judith Wilson presenting, and here's how many parents. And, because I actually don't even really, I mean, I, I listened to her, her presentation twice. Mm -hmm. I did get a sense of what our goals are from those questions. But like the parents that asked me, I don't know. And so I think, again, going back to, to a website, that's where people go. And what make it easy that to get I spent that all that information. One parent said to me, I spent all that time, I sat down, I never answered those things, but I really felt this was very important, and I was excited that we were doing that, because people want to give feedback when it's important. Right, to so we, we, talk, we talked about, you know, I don't really taking know. more ownership of our, of our page, the BOE page. It's right. a perfect point thing to to put on there. So yeah. if we're doing a, a yearly BOE survey, right. then those results should be on our page. Right. And, and, and it should be uh, easy to find. Easy, one, yeah, easy to find, right. easy to understand. Yeah. Right. One, of, one of the uh, websites that I looked at um, had, to that point, um, common questions. So in other words, they have a general email. So let's say I email. Whatever happened with that survey? Just wondering. Then I, and there's a little clause when I send that to us as a, as a parent, that this might be put anonymously as a question that came out, came out, came a couple of times and we're going to post the answer. So there's a, within our page, a Q&A that's out there. And that just might be a common, why, why, you know, why did the AD, you know, you know, just common questions that you get when you're out in the supermarket or you're out about in the community. Mm -hmm. um, or, but that people now are starting to send emails. So you know it's important enough that they're sitting and they're actually spending time to send you an email. Um, so th those are just examples of, Again, using the website to answer questions that people then then things get out of con you know sort of there's a question it's not answered now the concern you know then all of a sudden false information starts so right. I think it's a great way it's a great yeah way yeah I do too I questions, agree right? yeah so that that's so I think uh, so we all agree surveys yeah, was a good thing to do yes yeah, okay so um, we we're all believers over, do we want to go forward <laughs> with the board office hours which we started last year um, we started that last year before every board meeting. How were they, were they received? I mean, did, did people come? It wasn't utilized all that much, right? That's no. Not, unfortunately, it, it, it seems that See, I honestly think that anything you ask people to come to in person is going to give you a lower response. Like when we talk about the live streaming, people are watching. Mm -hmm. You know, like even after our last board meeting, I went home. My husband was like, "Why didn't you ask this? Why didn't you ask that?" But he has no way, thank God, of like communicating with me during the middle of it. Right? I guess he could text me the questions I could ask, but I think so somewhat he'll stop watching. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all still so new, right? But I I feel like if there was a way for the general community to access us without having to show up because yeah. we all have very busy schedules mm -hmm. right yeah. and kids are busy we talked about that a little bit when we talked about upgrading the av equipment right we talked about maybe having some sort of interactive yeah. um but that, that would require in order to do that would require us upgrading uh, mm -hmm. our equipment yeah. but you could have some um mechanism by which people at home can actually yeah like you can do the webinars and the hand goes up and you see the question come in mm -hmm. yeah, it yeah. Would be kind of, but that would require a, quite a bit of Oh, would it? Logistical. I think so. Yeah, the software. That's, yeah, in order to make it interactive. Yeah. So, um, something. But, but your well, point being that you, the board office hours you don't think are popular that. because it's it's yeah it's I not, think it's, it's a waste of time. People to come come here. Six o'clock, right at dinner time. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's not easy. And no. schlepping around for sports mm -hmm. and yeah. I just yeah. I mean I think maybe. But, but, I, but I will say though, and I agree. I don't disagree with you, but I don't really see the harm in taking it away. Mm -hmm. because if it's not utilized, it's not utilized. Mm -hmm. it's well, I'm not going to say that, no, I mean, there were... In the beginning, we had a couple of folks couple of um, do it in the beginning, and, and then it kind of fizzled um, out. Like a couple, like two? No, uh, um, about three or four, right? Three, what if three maybe, three, four, maybe three. Maybe three. I mean, what if we had, <laughs> what if we had on the website where, or we put... I can barely get you know, here. If you want God. to schedule, I mean... If, well, the way we did that... Or that it's available. Two board that we are available for it. That. Right. We are okay, we're not sitting there for two hours or whatever mm -hmm. it was. Well, we only did it if somebody had somebody okay. wanted yeah. to speak to us. Oh, yeah. There was only two board members, so we rotated it around because you can't okay. have more than two. You then had it's to a quick. Touch with us the week before. Let us know. We could. I mean, I wouldn't would take it away. That's what I'm saying. I, I, it was. Oh, okay. if it's by appointment only. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. It was by appointment only, and it was only two two board members that that did it. Okay. All right. So I don't. Let's leave. I think. I think also in 
doing a better job of communicating then there that there's an opportunity, yeah. right. that yeah. also will go a long way there also. Yeah. Um, okay, mm -hmm. we also talked about uh, quarterly town, uh, town hall type meetings. Last year, Carl, we did have a couple um, regarding, uh, we had a safety meeting, um, which was very well attended. Mm -hmm. We had, um, you had capital. Oh, yeah, there's many, one many hosted by the PTA. Project. PTA hosted a a Q and A, basically mm -hmm. an opportunity for parents. That was last year, right? Was that just last year? Um, I thought you did the town hall. Two years ago, so. two years ago, last year, I believe, was the safety meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, our PTA president did mm -hmm. uh, make that mm -hmm. offer once mm -hmm. again, and, mm -hmm. and is happy to uh, host mm -hmm. and facilitate uh, the town hall. Right. We're just saying that we think that it's more difficult come to the meeting to be in front of the mic to um, right. you know if there's an opportunity where you could come address the board um, it doesn't necessarily have to be on a specific topic um, but just to have an open forum um, or if there is something specifically happening um, I know now our coddle principal has been taking advantage of having more meetings actually about changes in in the drop-off and pickup uh, last year about the changes in the, in the fifth grade and curriculum and they've been well attended Very well attended, so yeah. that's mm -hmm. um that's <coughs> been good but there are other things where you know if people want to access not just another way that they could express their opinions and things that they may be wanting to share with us so um do we want to keep that on the list Town meetings um I mean, we don't want to like be I, not I, realistic I, here. We yeah, can that, I'm concerned about you know, I'm concerned about how much we are taking on as a board and whether or not we mm -hmm. have enough bandwidth for that. Mm -hmm. Number one, the other thing I'm concerned about too is that, as much as I want to have open communication with the community, and I do. I don't know if if we do town hall meetings, I think we should have a topic mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we're that we're yeah, discussing, that not just mm -hmm. open mm -hmm. to anything people want mm -hmm. to come and talk about. Well, so then I don't know that we have to and then what makes commit it to it unless right. there is something that we want to right. Know, Address. Something specific we want to address. Or yeah. that we feel that the community wants to address with us. You know, last time, the way we set it up, it was two years ago, uh, Michelle. And we did ask uh, parents or community members to submit questions in advance. The idea behind that was so we can have a more informed discussion. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we had a panel. We had right. a good representation of all different departments and different buildings and, and the board as well. Uh, and I, I found that to be very helpful to have the questions so we could be able to, you know, to, to give the responses that pe people were hoping to get if they invest the time in right. coming out for, right. for a meeting like that. Yep. So yep. PTA uh, did a great job with it, and I know they're willing. So, right. No, I mean, I, I think it's good because what we do now is is we have board meetings where we have an agenda that's already set mm -hmm. and and it's not specific to one issue we have the workshop the workshops are really more for us to to work as a board although people are welcome to come so this is an uh, opportunity to talk about something specific like we can have maybe a town hall on special on special education concerns or right? something like that and, right. and just have a discussion about it and I think your, your point is, is a good call I think having people send in questions ahead of time is it makes it more efficient right. yeah. yeah and and, and miss Goodman and Pete like for example with that you know, Ms. Goodman will um, host meetings. Right. She'll partner with the PTA uh, for topics specific to special education, and, and that, that right. we did last year as well. So right. there'll be at least one or two of them if a board member wants to join. Mm -hmm. Right. But that, that is already in place. I just threw that as an example. Yeah. I wasn't I'm not saying yeah. that we have to do but that. There's other topics, certainly. I mean, right. the list is endless. And there's so right. many good topics that we, we can open up. Okay. okay. So that was one. Uh, okay, we already talked about board presentations. <coughs> we have talked about that with Carl. Feedback on um, on the board, on the superintendent's goals and the building goals, and um, just really more feedback from the building leaders at our meetings. Like, let them be the voice of their schools. Let them uh, let us know what's going on. Our uh, assistant superintendents, you know. Uh, Lee Sear, um, Assistant Superintendent of Business, she has an opportunity at every meeting to tell us anything that's going on, and, and usually she does. Um, there is business, right. you know, if, if you do look at other board meetings, you do see that there is an opportunity for more of the school right. leadership to have a voice at those meetings right. than just, you know, yeah. the board or. Right. 
So I think there are a lot of models to look at um, mm -hmm. <coughs> with that also. Mm -hmm. yeah. And look, you know, these are not things that, you know, we may be able to put in place right away, but it's something that going forward, it may not, it may not to be something until it's done next year, but it's just something that we've identified as can be improved and done, mm -hmm. done better. Right. Yeah. There's also that question, no, I'm not going to bring, I was going to say all the complicated things, but of having seven board members versus five, just, I'm just th thinking of the who's at the table and then the representation right and then it's the su superintendent it's the board and it's the assistant superintendents I'm just have looked at other board um, district and other districts and boards and other and and there's there's more sevens and fives mm -hmm. that we even mm -hmm. to our side I mean we have mm -hmm. a small district mm -hmm. so it's just something that to consider mm -hmm. see again maybe one of our surveys we see what the community thinks about that um, do they want more, more do they want more people at the table yeah more representation yeah. sure yeah good question um, okay, and then we also talked, I, I mentioned it earlier, about opening our lines of communication with our TTA and our CSEA, and again, doing that in a way that um, does not, you know, um, interfere with um, the superintendent's leadership and the building leadership, but just in a way to um, have a better working relationship, a more inclusive and a, a better understanding of each other's roles and what we're doing, you know, just, just more dialogue. Yeah. Um, I've had two meetings this summer with our new uh, union uh, TTA president, uh, Jeannie Whalen, uh, very um, positive and willing to work together to find a model that could that works, you know, or just, just maybe more input on things that, you know, um, I'm jumping to the next, but mm -hmm. like our next is policy, right? So our, our policy on making policy does say that we need to have um, more, more input from the community, from right. our staff. So just to include, be more inclusive in some of the decision making, mm -hmm. I think is um, just a, a more positive way of going. And I do think that could help also with the morale that they feel like their voices are being more part of the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we're really going on and on. We got a lot yeah, to do so, here. <laughs> so we need, I think this is good discussion. I think we just need to refine a little more. And clean this all up. Clean up yes. the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the communications goal mm -hmm. um, a little bit more. Okay. I know we're, it looks like we're pretty set or pretty clear on website surveys. Right. And then the rest of it's a little more muddier, but the overall theme is we want to improve communications mm -hmm. with with the community mm -hmm. and with with our with mm -hmm. internal folks. Mm -hmm. right. um, and how exactly do we want to do that? So right. I think that's what we can work on between right. now and when we present our goals right. is how we want to refine that a little right. more. And Peter, if I, <clears throat> if I could just emphasize, I didn't say it earlier. And I don't mean to kind of backtrack, mm -hmm. but you brought it up. <clears throat> we have webmasters, and and we have Lauren who who you know uh, does a lot of our communications. But that information has to come from the staff, from the teachers, from the administrators, and, and you know, that sometimes presents a challenge. Yep. Life is busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this summer is one of the busiest mm -hmm. ever in, in just making sure we're up and running mm -hmm. and safe. Mm -hmm. So sometimes presenting something, you know, gets pushed aside or in transitions, for example, you know, sometimes that occurs. But, but I do want to emphasize, you know, Lauren, I, I believe, does a very competent job mm -hmm. of maintaining and sending out reminders, but it is sometimes difficult when, when you're in the trenches, when, when you're working with the kids, when you have, you know, all these priorities to turn around and say, okay, I have to really send yeah. content or yeah. for the website. Mm -hmm. However, it's still very important. So maybe there is some more conditioning we need to do with the entire yeah, staff. I, I don't think that we're trying to criticize necessarily mm -hmm. what anybody in particular I, I think yeah, what we're saying is the way we're the way we're currently structured to manage a website is we're kind of saying that it's not really all that important yeah I think because because we're having people like Lauren who has a million wears a million hats and has a lot on her on her yeah. plate do this too well that's kind of saying well that's not really a priority then so I, I think what we're trying to say is that we're, we're looking to put more resources not sure how that's really going to look mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. into this being done at a higher level mm -hmm. rather than it being somebody's side job sure. or five people's side jobs yes and, and and the end result is the end result and i know that right now we're also laura laura lauren is um <coughs> is sort of handcuffed in a way in terms of design we're using a, a design platform that is that is not very um um 
the, the, progressive. Yeah, it, well, it, it's, it's a very standard format. You, can, you can't change it much, but it the is. color scheme. And it's through so both seas, really but easy. there are right. some other options. The committee also, you probably want to start because it, it is supported through BOCES. Right. Mm -hmm. So you probably want to start by just exploring the options that are available to right. us based on what we're paying for now. Right. Yeah. Um, if we decide then to go with an outside, um, you know, web website company, right. uh, and there are many. I mean, the, the, the trust so is most districts go through BOCES? Many do. Many mm -hmm. use eTruck as the platform. Right, uh, right. And BOCES supports that. So if you, you know, if you go outside. It's very affordable, but it doesn't offer yeah. you much flexibility. You're correct. In terms of design, it's, it's one design, you change the color scheme, and that's it. I, I believe, for the most part. I, I could be wrong on this, but again, I think it's a good discussion for the committee to have. Mm -hmm. There may be some options within right. what, what we it's already small, uh, yeah. right. pay for. Right. Right. And, and, and maybe that's, you know, maybe it's a two-part. Maybe it's what can we do this year immediately. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if, if we're going to do more and change the model and go with an outside company, if that's the decision, then that should be introduced in the budget right. process. Yep. And certainly you could launch something. You know, totally redoing a website, and we've gone through a few, is a great summer project. It, it is a challenging thing to do mid-year. Mm -hmm. I will just say I that. So, so maybe yeah. it's even a two-part strategy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and attack. Yeah, well, don't forget, though, when you do website design, you could be doing, you could be developing a new site offline right. while the current site is online, yes. and then you can roll it out when you're ready. So it doesn't have to be done. It's not like one has to come down and one goes up. You, you can develop it along the way. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're moving. Okay. So we have our superintendent search. We have improvement of communications with our stakeholders. Uh, po and this is uh, superintendent search. Number one, the rest, I mean, this is not an order of priority. We, we will um, talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, is our policy review and creation. Um, so basically, um, really the two uh, most important roles of the board, one is, the super, is, is filling the superintendent's position, and two is policy. Oh. And it really has been somewhere over the years that we have just not uh, accomplished in terms of really focusing in on our policy and following our own policy in creating policy. Right. So, we have the so policy. It's not following anyway, there's right? a policy to create policy. Yeah. So, uh, and then certain um, within that prioritize things that have come to the board that we feel that we should, should address be addressed in policy, in policy right. um, and not necessarily in practice. So. Um, we did start to informally make a list mm -hmm. of some of the mm -hmm. policies that we'd like to talk about. Uh, we don't uh, have to get into them now. Right. I mean, but I mean this work is having done it once already with Cynthia on the on the um, facilities. facilities. It's, it's a lot of work. Yes. And it's time consuming. Um, we actually lean a lot on our attorneys to help us with it, but it still is a, 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 quite an undertaking. So. But I think because it's a lot of work and because we get so busy with the day-to-day -day stuff, um, we tend to just not do it as much as we should. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what would be good to do is, is set as a goal what areas that we think we'd like to address this year in policy. Because mm -hmm. I think if we don't kind of put it on paper and make it a priority, we're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So And we have a list here, but I don't think we should do all of it. I think mm -hmm. it's too much. Mm -hmm. um, but I think maybe we pick a couple of items that we oh, we definitely want this year to get to mm -hmm. in terms of either policy creation or policy re review, and we could always do more. Yeah, it's not we can't you know, but I think it's good to kind of throw a couple up on the, on on the goals so that we we make it a priority. So facilities is current then, because facilities. So is is current. Other than I guess with the new. Well, the fields we have, and then the, the, I guess when we we acquired Simonor, so that's another. I guess you yep. would addition, right? These be addendums to the current one, or so I think we need, need to now uh, create a new policy for Siwanoi, but I think that's already been being worked it's on. Is that right? Lee? We we actually doing that? Are we working on a policy for Siwanoi? Uh, the opening and closing of the street. Yeah. You know, procedural. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I that could be part of this, the the you know, long term. Right. What are we doing with Siwanoi with the field and and we have you know, to decide that first. Yeah. Um, well, you could put a policy in place now. You certainly could. I mean, right, right now the street is closed. It will only be open for emergency access of, of right. vehicles, and it will only be open at dismissal at Coddle for parent pickup. So that's, that's the procedure that John, John presented to us, John Morash. Mm -hmm. So it's closed. Um, we could create a policy mm -hmm. um, establishing that, and, and I think in, in the future if the board, you know, and the community decide to do something different, then, then certainly it could be revised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Because, yeah, you know, when we, when we say dismissal, well, what is the time? What's the time frame that it's opened, it's closed, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Um, I, I think that is something that should be put in policy. I think so, too. And then you have those mm -hmm. barriers. I mean, just looking at me, could somebody just go out and sort of move them to get their call? You know what I'm saying? You don't yeah. know what people mm -hmm. sort of take. And the policy would designate who's in charge right. of, I mean, obviously who's it's going to be the superintendent, but, like, but it's good to put in writing who's in charge, who can make the decision, who can't. To open and close. Yeah, yeah. open and close, whether it's set time. <clears> so I think, I think. Simon Ray Boulevard, the opening and closing of it should be something we set in policy. Okay. So that would be one. Okay. Um, we talked about, I don't know if do we want to. Yeah, we don't really need to go. Do you want to go through that? I mean, no, we don't need to. Do but I, I think we do before we, um, I don't know, unless you disagree, I think before we sort of set our goals, we should maybe pick the three or four things that we're going to do. Okay. Um, as part of that goal. Otherwise, we're just saying policy, policy. review, which okay. is not really right. that specific, okay. right? All right, what else we have there? So we talked about... Special education. Special education, whether or not we want to set a policy that establishes parameters, goals, and guidelines um, that for, for accepting out-of-district special needs students. So right now, we, we take in special needs students from out-of-district. Do we want to um, put some more parameters or some more guidance from the board to the district? On that topic, in, in, in a go, in a policy. So that's one thing to consider. Mm -hmm. Another one we talked about was whether or not we wanted to do a policy on on human resources, which would be establishing some sort of criteria and requirements that must be met regarding uh, hiring procedures. So do we want to consider that? Doesn't mean we have to do it, but right now the hiring procedures are are dictated by the superintendent. Do we want to actually have some board of education? policy parameters to go along with that and we talked about um, creating a policy maybe for teaching and coaching uh, I'm sorry tutoring, tutoring and coaching tutoring and coaching limitations on um, on our permanent staff teachers and, and and coaches what they can and can't do in terms of one-on-one um, -on -one paid for tutoring and coaching we want to have a policy about that and then we talked about oh, Simon. I was in here. And is this pertaining just to our staff, or on the coaching, or is this like parents being the coaches and that kind that of could stuff? Be, that could well, be in there as well. Too. That, okay. that could be in there as well. Yep. And then um, we talked about review and editing the board of and staff communication policy. Um, that was put on here because some of the things we've talked about in terms of improving communications technically might be in violation of our existing policy. Uh, I don't know that, that it is, but I think it needs to be looked at because, because yeah, 9140 <laughs> basically talks about how we're only really supposed to talk to our staff through this superintendent. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to sort of open that up a little bit, then we need to look at that policy as well right. to make sure that we're not doing yeah. anything conflictory. Right. And the last one I think we had on here was data collection and use. If we wanted to have any kind of policy on what we as a board um, want to dictate in terms of what types of data we want collected um, and reported back to us. So I don't think we should do all that. Yeah, they're all so good. It's a lot. They're all so good. Uh, we, we could do more, but I think in order for, for a yearly goal, we should yeah. pick one or yeah. two or three that we're definitely going to do. Mm -hmm. And then if we could do more, we'll do more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll it would here, also be good to hear from our leadership if there are things here that through policy would be helpful. You know, like well, I think part of us establishing the board liaisons with the building level peop, um, administrators is so that we are creating more meaningful policy than just arbitrarily picking topics that we think are, yeah. you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I feel like we should almost table this discussion until we all meet with our building level administrators to see what their feedback is mm -hmm. as far as what they think useful policy would be yeah, as far be. as um, you know going well, forward. It would be nice though is to get into a cycle and I agree, totally agree with you but it would be nice to get into a cycle where we where we do that every year and then by the time we're at this point we know what policy we want to review we'll and, and, and put it in the goals yeah. for the next mm -hmm. year. I think it would be a good thing to, for, for the board going forward to always have as one of their goals what policies they want to tackle for that year. Right. But to your, to your point, I need that discussion probably needs to happen first. And then hopefully we can get on some sort of a cycle that's, that's being done. Right. Well, I think, I mean, me looking at, I don't know, if, or I don't know how much time we want to put into this, but looking at this, I would say probably the most important policy is reviewing um, the communication policy because it's hinging on our other board goal, right, mm -hmm. for 
improving our communication. Mm -hmm. So how do we, right, right. how does that look, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that has to be a policy that we tackle, tackle yeah. and uh, define because then we can't do the website as we want to or what or we think would be beneficial, right? So I think that definitely has to be one. Um, and on the street, we have right. to, right? That has to happen. That has, has to happen. happen. Yeah. As far as, I mean, I think for me, I think that human resources is always important in every organization, and we have no human resources here, so how that's going to look, but I don't know. Um, well, yeah, I mean, human resources, is, it's, it's a big job, and I think, you know, Carl does the majority of it as far as hiring, right, Carl? Um, and then he brings in, you bring committees and... Well, you know, yeah, I mean, it, which is which it, is a nice pl uh, that is a good model, I and think. it is well, and it is decentralized. So, so I, I have taken lead with the key administrator right. positions. And, you know, thank you, you you've principles. sat on those committees for us this year. Um, but that process takes place at the building levels, like for the teachers. You know, the the principals are really the the, the lead a hiring administrator, uh, organizing that process. I do meet everyone who works here at least for one final interview uh, bef before I recommend them to you. Uh, but they're vetted and they go through a pretty rigorous process already now, but we don't have a policy. So, right. so I, I think, you know, there's hiring, that's one mm -hmm. aspect of it. Yeah. Then there is the entire model of personnel. Right, I think. Which certainly could be looked at and, and, and I think prior to the budget process, a lot of what you're talking about, mm -hmm. You know, some of it has budget impact, yeah. and 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 we that process starts internally. Lee starts working with the 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 staff around December, January. Then by February, March, it's it's rolled out to the board of education for consideration. But I think you know some of this work. I think if if we believe it's going to have a budget impact, maybe that helps you to prioritize. So, for example, if if you did want to restructure the the HR department in, in mm -hmm. the district. That may have a budget impact. Yeah. So maybe have that discussion in the fall ahead of the budget process. Right. Same thing with the point. website. If we're thinking of, you know, changing that model and having one person, you know, a PR person, a communications person, or, you know, and, and bringing in an outside company, there's a, maybe a budget impact that should be discussed early. So I... Okay. Just some thoughts. No, th yeah. that's good. So then my other thought would be special education because we do have... For this year, Amy Goodman, who, I mean, I've only met her once, really, but I'm very impressed by I feel like she has a lot to bring to the table, and as a resource within our district, could help us kind of formulate a policy that would be... Um, you mean for the out, out, you mean the out-of-district out policy, or just... Yeah. yeah. Well, you do... You like do her have expertise in guiding us as to what is appropriate, what is not appropriate, mm -hmm. you know, and what should we be looking for as a criteria mm -hmm. no. because we have her and we have her expertise for the next year set those parameters with and yeah. set up those mm -hmm. to help her, to use her almost like as a consultant to help mm -hmm. guide us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a great idea and you, you do have a policy to work from there is a non-resident tuition student policy in mm -hmm. place. Uh, it's been updated a few times, but certainly, you know, so that's, that's good because you're not starting from nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. and you could look at that. You could look at what's in place and get her, you know, she, she's a, a new set of eyes. Right. Uh, with, with many, many years of valuable experience. I, it's a good idea. So then what are we saying then? What, what are we saying? What are we saying? That we, that we're we saying we're doing the street. Doing the street for sure. We're, we're doing, doing the street. Do we're doing um, the communication, the communication policy. policy, and we're doing special ed. We're doing special ed. So those are our three definites. Three definites. And then and then special ed, street. I, well, you, I, you didn't start the tutor coaching. I know I know some of the meetings that I watched before we were on the board, you had mentioned that a couple we of times. We have been talking about that one for a right. while. Yeah. You know, some, the, what some is of the things that are what on is, the list yeah. are, are items that, um, or concerns that came to us through parents over the year mm -hmm. the last couple of years really. a pattern of so there. Um, well, I think the tutoring coaching we could definitely make policy on it's not yeah, gonna cost I mean, anything you know no we've, we've actually there's other policies we've looked at Scarsell has a pop many almost every district actually in our surrounding area has it's, policy it's, a, it's on. an area we don't have it's a policy not, that most there is no oh, well, then that should be a exists. policy because there's no budget implication <laughs> correct mm -hmm. and that okay. seems easier yeah <laughs> Yeah. No offense. No, right. and, and it's, it's essentially memorializing <laughs> some of the best practices that, that the, the district is already following. It's just a matter of putting it into, into policy. policy. Right. right. Yeah. 
So I think that's a good one to do to also. So. Okay. All right, that's it. We're done. Because you know, All yeah, because right. the policy one ninety one forty one would be fairly easy and simple because it's just basically looking at it in, mm -hmm. in terms of what else we want to do. We may not have to make any changes to it. So I think it's just a matter of looking at it. So that one, the road, um, tutoring, coaching, special education. We'll make those four mm -hmm. for sure. That good. That are going to happen. Yeah. 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 Now our two policy liaisons are? Pete and Cynthia. Pete yes. and Cynthia, that's correct. But Lauren, I, Lauren is watching from home. She's doing the minutes for us. She is. Well, what, I, what I would suggest, though, on that, what I would suggest, having gone through this already, is that instead of having two board members be a policy, overall policy, that we actually assign two board members to each one of these to initiatives. Of mm -hmm. That would be, mm -hmm. I think it would be more efficient and faster. And we can get it done. Then we can work at the same Otherwise time. Otherwise, it's not going to get done. Yeah, it's okay. not going to get done. So, so who's so doing what? Okay. Yeah. Are we doing that now? Uh, we could do that now. I mean, although, you know, Cynthia's not here, but we could do that now. Well, then she doesn't oh. get to pick. Michelle, it's up to you. You want, you want to do that now or you want to? No, I don't think we'll do it. I, do we? No. Do it now? We don't no. need to. Do no. you want to do it now? Let's do you want to do it now or you don't want to do it now? I have no... Um, you have no thought? No. Um, no you want to wait till Cynthia's here maybe? I don't yeah. Know. That might be I don't be able to... Or does she, um, does she have a preference? Well, given well, her think, background, think, special ed would be I good for her. Let's just do it now, okay? okay I think Laura right. has an interest in the... And uh, Therese and the... Um, well, oh, yeah, we're doing, do special are we, we're not doing HR, though, right? Did we say not to HR? Cause I'm no, we, no HR. We, HR wasn't one of the, the top four that we said for okay. sure. We could do it, but but it's not. So no, we said we'll, special let's ed. pick for the top four. Right. Special, special ed, tutoring, coaching, new, uh, the Simon and Boulevard, and then the review of the current okay. communications policy. Okay. Therese? Yes. Is there was that up for something? No. <laughs> 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 I don't. No, I'm kidding. Well, you and I do special needs. Fine, meetings. yes, because we're on the it's special ed committee special anyway. Right. So we're going to be meeting with yeah, Amy Goodman. Yeah, yeah. So that makes the most sense. So um, I will, um, is it one, two? How are we doing? We're doing well, two we're per policy. Okay. Two Pete, per policy. So we all have to do more than one. Yeah. Cynthia, what's left? Um, tutoring and coaching, tutoring and then coaching. reviewing. Tutoring and coaching, I could take that on. I've already have the research on the policies. Right. right. I could do that one with you okay. if you want. Okay, so Michelle mm -hmm. and Therese will do that one. And, and then, um, so who's doing sign Are you doing sign with me? Yes. So then you want to do communica communications? Well, you already got me on two. I'm I can sorry. Do, so. so then okay. Cynthia and Laura will do communications. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And that's a, that's the review of the current one. Yeah, and that one should really be easy lift because it's just a matter of looking at it in terms of okay. what we want to do on communication and see if there's any conf conflict, and then we confer with Will about how we may want to change the language. Maybe there is no. I mean, he may say there is really no conflict as long as the superintendent concurs right. with these with these. Uh, I mean, there is no conflict. I don't know. So it could be an easy okay. one. The, yeah, the the board staff. It's a pretty basic policy. Right. I, I, I'm no, it's, it's like a paragraph. Yeah. yeah, it's very easy. That's why I'm saying it's, I don't it's, it's going to be an easy one. There aren't that many. Well, then should we have another? policy because I feel a little cheated <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Cynthia <laughs> exactly. I don't know or should we start working on a policy towards HR and just assign two people What's to it, it? Wait, so that we, we, we could no. say the HR when we're well, not going to HR is going to be addressed in policy no, I, know. It's, it's probably I, I think more, you want to look at the model yeah, okay. my, my, ju mm -hmm. my judgment yeah. is right. you, you may want to look at the yeah. whole model okay so what was the other things on the list the data collection and use. Do we want a policy on that? Yeah, but I, I will say I, I like you. That's an area where your point before I think is valid, where we probably need to talk to um, building okay, administrators so let's a little leave more, it get a little more research on that, yeah. get a we little more. Right, we can always add. So yeah. this is a good start. There, there was yeah. a, this is not, this is just popped into my head because a parent had asked me about this, that when she's filled out one of the surveys, and this is not on our, I'm not saying to, to do this or address it necessarily in what we're doing tonight, but um, again, going back to the communication back route, feedback that we got as a district, and but one of them was she she wanted a homework policy. And I actually, when I was researching mm -hmm. on the district, some districts have yep. K through 12 homework policies because even within a grade, you know, some kids getting swamped, this other kid's not getting right. any. Right. Um, and I know it's probably contractual, so I don't know, but teachers no. and homework policies, but I just wanted, because I had a couple people in the community ask me about mm -hmm. homework policy. Right? It, it's not contractual, but it's a complex topic, believe Okay, it, it is, okay. Um, there are many different philosophies on homework, how much, how much is too much. Okay. Um, if at all. It's, it's, it's a debate that yeah. goes on and Flipped on. Classrooms. What about class um, size? Oh, class 
class size. Because that's always one. That that's Cla class safe. size is, is another interesting one. And yeah. I, I think I, Michelle touched on this earlier, you know, what would our administrators want? If, if you set a policy on class size, it makes it very simple for administration. Um, we've had years, it doesn't happen every year, but we've had years where, where you know, we've had, for example, kindergarten parents, you know, particularly questioning, you know, when will you open a, a new section? At what point when enrollment hits a certain number? And if, if, if the admin team and even Lee Lu, as from a business perspective, if we had clear guidance, mm -hmm. you know, where, okay, if kindergarten tips 21 students per, per class, mm -hmm. we're going to open up a fifth section. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, the admin team would welcome that. Um, but that again, it's it's something. That has budgetary I, and it does. And yeah. but, yeah, but with the policy, the no, board sure, no, 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 right. could look saying, at the research it does, behind yeah. it, and, I think and the board is in control then, of it. If you needed to change it, yeah. you could. Right. I have a very good friend who's uh, a teacher in actually in a neighboring district, and there is a policy there. And then I believe there's also a cutoff date. So the enrollment exactly. up to a certain oh, date, yeah, yeah. Yes. and um, because after that date, then you're you know. You, you can't be making new sections at that point. Well, I think that's something that has come up many times in many different arenas, and we should absolutely look into okay, so as a policy. Okay. Okay, so we're who's looking for something else. Yeah. We, we, we actually dress. already have some. We have oh, some dress samples. Code came up too. Someone asked me about dress. Code. We already have oh, some yeah. samples from other dress dress code. Code. It should be the code of conduct. Whoever dress takes code it, code it, code it code we already you have to enforce it. Sure, as you okay. wanted, to, I'll do. I'll do that with you. Class okay. size. We, Class size. Lauren actually already. I, I asked okay. Lauren um, a while ago to and pull Michelle. some policy. So we have samples okay, from so other districts. We now have one more. Okay. Okay. The other one now homework. Homework I know is something Cynthia is very interested in. The other just came up today when we were touring the school and it seems um, everything here is um, well, so is the food delivery at school and we're saying with food for security purposes are we gonna is there a policy on mm -hmm. right is, now. so right now is there a policy on ordering food in the high school or high school students call with can there, they leave the building and how's that there's no well well, there is a practice, you know, for high school seniors in an open campus. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no board policy on it, so that is something. Again, you know, the board could mm -hmm. set policy. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it, you're, you're looking. I for think policy. that's another question for the building level administrators, right. yeah, as far as like, is it disruptive having right. the lobby right. filled with students waiting for Uber Eats or whatever they do? Right. Well, and we have to look. Our new security vestibule right. See, that's really may right. change right. things. Right, that's going to change procedures a so little you, bit. Yeah. You may want to hold let's a bit. That, let's yeah. let's mm -hmm. get this new system mm -hmm. in place, which should be mm -hmm. by you know um, early mm -hmm. fall. And um, you could invite the administrators. Yeah, and you, mm -hmm. uh, what See we can also do is, with the liaisons, Lauren can arrange at, at your, you know, when it works for you, meetings with you know, small mm -hmm. focus groups with mm -hmm. administrators, mm -hmm. with the right people. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we know who, who would have the best mm -hmm. insight into, right. into the impact on this and I, stuff. And I think, you know, Teresa, like that, she just said that's a good one to ask. The, all of these are really for our administrative team right. yeah. to really yeah. have a, a big input input on and and I th and I do appreciate what Carl just said where I do believe there are some areas where policy um, they would prefer to have policy right. um, I think in other areas they they want to have their own discretion in because it mm -hmm. it, um, it and they should you know they're in a managerial position and they should be mm -hmm. able to use their discretion right. and so it's this it's a, a balancing act and I think that we want to put policy where we feel it's it's needed and will be in the best use but I do think that the absence of it in some areas has made everyone's job a little bit more difficult so I, I do think that the, that in working together and it really goes back to one of our own goals which yeah. is to work together in a way that you know serves students best so I think that um, you know I, I think this is really what this is the work of the board is the policy and the, now just in this conversation we can see why and in setting the priorities of, of things that have come up been addressed to the board not resolved um, some of the repeating right. um, concerns, concerns yeah. need to be addressed in policy because right. then it just answers right. you know a, a lot of the open questions and I think so, you have everyone on board like to you know going back to the administration once you have everybody on board with this is mm -hmm. going to be the best mm -hmm. case scenario for the students mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. it's going to be enforced mm -hmm. too right, right? so it's not right. if you if it's a top-down approach it doesn't work right. you know it has to really come mm -hmm. from 
sort of a grassroots. The parents mm -hmm. are saying, the teachers are saying, let's mm -hmm. do it, and then mm -hmm. it, it benefits the students. Correct. Agreed. Okay. So we have a lot on our plate there. Okay. Yeah. What's next? So the only other yeah. one we talked about was maybe having some sort of discussion or some sort of um, goal related to facilities. This one, I think we were talking more about, um, you know, we do have to make some decisions on, 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 the, ca on the coddle field. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what to do with the street. What to do with the street the and the coddle field, and coddle field and collectively. Mm -hmm. And then did we want to have some discussions this year? And the goal could just be to have discussions, that they mean more than that, mm -hmm. about whether or not we want to start talking about a, a possible uh, additional capital project mm -hmm. after this one is done, mm -hmm. being that we have some debt coming off and some of the stuff that we we and more uh, long term planning. Right, that that to me it would just be discussion. It wouldn't be necessarily mm -hmm. we're going to action mm -hmm. anything at this mm -hmm. point, but just really start. Right, but it might just discussion. be as Carl said earlier, really to just ha the work of a facilities committee, right. um, getting you know back in gear. Right. And we actually have a lot Setting of priorities if we do have a future capital. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot a lot of talented community members who all right. contributed to that and and very helpful in that process the last go around so I think if it's a committee with a structure as mm -hmm. to some of these things that um, are specific and also you know that it supports the superintendent's right. um, goal which is the same you know yeah so that, that's the one goal that would be consistent with your goal yeah. in the sense that we have a facilities goal yeah. and so the board can appoint Lee uh, remind me for our last project were the facilities committee members appointed by the board? I believe so. Yes, they were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you right. and then we had board liaisons. So you know that that I think is definitely something worth considering. Maybe maybe winter or spring. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we wrote down in this area too is because we talked about it before it was uh, establishing a, a capital improvement savings fund. I know we talked about that as mm -hmm. well. Is that something mm -hmm. that we want to try and get you know yes. has to be done this to year? That to the board during the budget process. Okay. Perfect. Oh, so you already plan to present that? So yes. yeah. that's going to have to be a, a goal for us then if it's already no. in works. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because that also came from the budget committee. Right. Um, so we don't have to put that as a will. Yeah, because yeah, it's going to be done. We should put it so we've already reached it. So we can, so we can check it off as soon as we did it. <laughs> well, that feel and good. Then Laura had, I think, her, do you have Laura's notes here? Yeah, right here. Okay, yep. sorry. Yep. So everyone did their own independent work, and I just want to make sure everybody, that we're really <coughs> getting everybody. Um, and then the most important of all is uh, curriculum which is our last. And um, I, I believe it really is just in support of the strategic right. Um, no plans, right? The, and I yeah. really do think that, you know, we need to put that up on the top, right, right after the right. superintendent's yeah, um, search, is that that has to be on the top. That, and, I, and I think, you know, Carl said it well, in the way that the budget aligned with that, and that's part of what we do, that we want to make sure that our administration knows that we are going to support right. um, the, all the initiatives mm -hmm. to get this work done. Um, it's really um, such an exciting time, and I think that we have to show our commitment um, <clears throat> to, to that work. So I believe really right after our- I agree. My question though is how do, how do we measure our success on that goal? What, what, well, what looks successful one, there for us? I think really for us is, is we want the reporting to us on the progress because we want to, we want to know what's happening. We want the community mm -hmm. to know. We want to see how it's moving right. along. Um, and we want to, and, and it's going it, it to, it's going to come through us because it will come up, I'm sure, again in, in the budget this year mm -hmm. and in, um, you know, in the presentations okay. to the board, right. and how are we going to is that that we made it a priority that in our meetings that we allotted time for this conversation, and I think that's the most important thing that we, we can, can also do. measure it through the surveys uh, with the staff and the faculty how they you know what their feedback is mm -hmm. in the curriculum and how they're implementing it in the classroom. Are they supported by? You know, their no, what, what, what I mean though is like, what, what, what is our goal in this category, and how do we measure whether that we were successful? These are our goals, right? right? So, so each goal, like the first superintendent search, obviously the goals right. of each one. Oh, we I see find what you're saying. We're going to find. BOE communications. When we when we do the surveys, we put them in place. We mm -hmm. do the new website, and that's that's done. 
policy when we achieve the policies mm -hmm. that we set forth that we did that so how do we say that, that well, goal was I achieved do think in, from and, the board's perspective um, Laura did put in her notes about the presentations from um, the assistant superintendent of curriculum who's uh, L Dr. McDonald and last year and the year before at the end there was uh, uh, at the end of the school year were some really really exciting meetings yeah. where we actually had students come to our meetings and show us mm -hmm. what they're doing um, and it was in terms of their writing and music and really that's what the community wants to see you, you know and it's so impressive and we need to showcase that at our meetings and I would like to see a, a piece of every meeting right so those where four are agreed. something is highlighted yeah. of what's happening in the classroom um, at every meeting Mm -hmm. And that is that could be our way of measuring, That's a measuring. It. That's a measuring. so that we can see um, and how what's happening in the classroom aligns with mm -hmm. the strategic yeah. plan. Yeah, um, I that, that is one way. And you know, don't forget to what I said earlier. The state is the next generation learning standards must be implemented next year. Mm -hmm. So having an aligned curriculum, mm -hmm. that Pete, going back to your question, you know, how, how do you measure success? How do, how do you know you accomplish the goal? you need for ELA and math K-12 you need a new a new continuum a new curriculum so you know the work has to be supported um, right we, we had unprecedented unprecedented number of teachers working on curriculum this summer right I and thought it, that was great yeah. and a lot of that aligned with the you know and, right. and again that came because the mm -hmm. board supported increasing the PD budget so we're mm -hmm. able to do more over the mm -hmm. summer right that's when the good work happens mm -hmm. it is very difficult for a teacher to teach all day you know, thinking about prepping for, for, for the week ahead and then to stay here late and work mm -hmm. on curriculum. Mm -hmm. They do, but it's so much no, more right. effective in the summer right. when right. you come to work and that, that's, that's, that's all your that you're doing. Right. Is, right. So there's a lot of work there, Pete, and I, I, I think producing an aligned curriculum mm -hmm. in, in those different areas, right. so, you know, that, that would be the evidence. No, I get it. Yeah, so, so, so our success as a board is, is your success as a district uh, of getting that done, basically. Yeah. And that, that's, right. you know, Dr. McDonald. Yeah, and we're really just stating by putting it on a goal that we're making, we're going to make it a priority to support that effort. That's mm -hmm. what we're saying. Right. And I, right. Yeah, and that I, would be up to, right. yeah. And, and I also wishes. just think in terms of the technology, it's so easy to, to, to showcase it, right. you know, so we right. can have, yes, the students come, but we could also just, just, a, you know, a very short clip at a meeting of, of something that's happening in the classroom or even some you know uh, talk about some of the work that was done over the summer we would like to hear about that we would mm -hmm. like to hear how it aligns mm -hmm. with the strategic planning and the and and yeah. how it's going to be used uh, in the classroom mm -hmm. so you know we're invest we're get we're raising our hand for the budget we're making those investments we'd like to hear right yeah the, the, I think the most well-received presentations when you had the students mm -hmm. here. Agreed. Yeah, great. Absolutely. If you recall, um, they came in, they presented writings. We have a K-12 writing curriculum. Yeah. Amazing. Directly from the students, I think, was really powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it was also wonderful for our students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they felt great about mm -hmm. being able to present mm -hmm. to the board. Mm -hmm. And so all around, I think that was a fantastic thing. The music presentation, yeah. again, bringing the mm -hmm. students here. So uh, that- Ms. Ferguson's that the recycling. The the, yes, the recycling, absolutely. That was great. The presentation on the um, interim, the uh, intern prog internship program yeah. for the, the seniors. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, uh, Mr. Calasuno, he did an excellent job on that. I mean, that was just, I, I thought that was excellent. Mm -hmm. And the quality of, of the, um, the job, the, the, the employment yeah, yeah. that he's been able to yeah. find and, great, and what the kids got that. out of it yeah. and their comments about it mm -hmm. and it just beginning to end. It well, was it was excellent. Just one other thing that just made me think of it when you're talking about students. Um, the other thing that I did write down here just and I've thought about this just as a parent um, and, and watching other com other board uh, other districts um, is bringing student liaisons and I know in the past we may have had this already um, and I know that you do exit interviews, so there's some aspects that I know that we do already in terms of reaching out to the students and asking them for their feedback. But just like when they come and present, um, and it's wonderful to see where they're at. But but now the high school students, for example, you know, their government body. Do we have? Can we have a, you know, a student that comes and sits as as a board member for that day and 
presents well, how the students are doing or things thoughts that they have about programs that they want or mm -hmm. classes that mm -hmm. I don't know just just throwing it out there that I've seen that in other districts one in particular in, in New Jersey that I was watching that did a fabulous job these kids were so impressive they made a little name played up for them they came they I mean they made the district look like as a parent I was watching this going God, such smart you know and we have them mm -hmm. here and it'd be mm -hmm. nice to create a liaison maybe yeah you know that's something to think about but I know that's mm -hmm. another thing I, had I kind of down. like the idea of a different student every month right. presenting in some way right and then something the in you student government you know something that's happening amongst right and coordinate their with the class principal and who yeah. he thinks and, and they kind of you know they're going to come with something already put together mm -hmm. you know it's going to put them on the spot but you know something to showcase yeah. and again then you have more students involved in mm -hmm. government yeah and then they can it's see great how. for their their resume building that mm -hmm. they've they've contributed in that way. But I think it, each class, each grade, having a voice in some way, mm -hmm. uh, maybe reporting on what what they're going to be doing in terms of fundraising. What they're you know all, all the right. I'm sure right. they have a lot or of even calls. bringing any questions, concerns mm -hmm. they have about mm -hmm. the school mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. and actually one, things one they want to see change. One yeah. of the things that this board in Jersey was it was uh, it was this past school year that the uh, student body brought up and there was two members from it. Um, was the um, social emotional the stress you mm -hmm. know this sort of college in high school it's it they're under a lot of anxiety and so they, they're they were presenting about and I won't go on to detail but basically they're presenting to the board of things that they ideas that they have as a school to change and one of them was and I thought this was that for the varsity athletes or the JV and varsity athletes that are let's say baseball and they're gone for they come home at nine o'clock off the bus you know these baseball games take forever that they actually give gym during that season they give the gym period up to have get their homework done, study hall. Study have hall. study hall, have, have te a teacher that's there that helps them that get through that year. Yeah. You know, just it's yeah. these little things that, that you that. wouldn't yeah. think of that they're going through mm -hmm. that right. we can actually mm -hmm. implement. It would right. change really the, the narrative mm -hmm. as far as them coming in and not getting their homework done like my son didn't know. No. Mm -hmm. um, but but he's, he struggled with that too, his first yeah. time on JV. You know, they were really late mm -hmm. and it was during finals time. These kids had games, finals. It was right. it was way right. too much. And if they're playing a sport, why they need to go to gym? Why are they the sitting sport? in a gym? Yeah. When they right, that really should be a time, time when they, just, just, listen, it's a very just, good point. I just watched yeah. that and I thought that was another uh, reason to have maybe students come and give yeah. yeah. their insight. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that was my feedback. Um, you can the the, the I, I believe when we looked into that state law, right? Carl does allow for that. That they if do. You're do that. They, they do. They do. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That if you're participating in a, I believe it's a varsity, varsity level I think sport. Not to be varsity, varsity, varsity level. Yeah. Varsity level sport that it, re, it fills your requirement right. for PE. Yeah, yeah, the principal has to approve it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It, it, it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Okay. okay. All right. So we have a lot. We had a lot to talk about. We got to refine a little. So more. we will clean yeah. it all up. Yeah. We are going to be presenting it on uh, our 16th? next meeting on the sixteenth, mm -hmm. and we'll we'll get it all together then. We'll also um, allow Cynthia to add her comments, and um, she'll um, be very happy about her assignments. I'm sure. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. Are we do, doing a brief? Do, do you have enough enough uh, energy to to go back to exact yeah, for maybe brief. fifteen minutes? Okay. So we, uh, oh so we will not adjourn <laughs> because we're going to go back into okay. executive session. Um, tomorrow is the opening. Uh, yes. Safe, yeah. uh, safe and um, successful year for all of our students, and very very exciting year ahead of us. So good luck to everyone. Yes. All right. Great first day. Yep. Yes. Good luck. <laughs> Very thank you. My kids need to go to bed. <laughs>